Luminzia version 11.7 now includes a whole new suite of options to create custom previews for the perfect luminosity mask. Let's close this and we'll come back in a second. In this scene here, I want to dodge and burn to create a sense of the light glowing on the left and casting light onto these rocks on the right. So typically, I would go reach for a dodge burn layer, something like a transparent pixel layer in the overlay blend mode would work great. Hit dodge burn to make that my dodge burn layer. And then I need something to work on the highlight areas of these rocks while avoiding the shadows. So I want a lights preview and I'd click on El Nemenzio for the lights preview. Now this is definitely gonna help target the highlights because the whiter things are gonna be more paintable and the darker things are gonna be more protected. However, there's really no separation here between the highlights of the rocks and the sky because they're both very light. And all I'm doing with the luminosity selection is picking the luminosity. So I need some better way of separating these, but let's just try what we have here and see what happens. So if I go and load this as my selection, hit B for my brush, I've got a warm light color selected. I can just start painting right on my dodge burn layer through that luminosity selection. Now it's definitely hitting the highlights and the rocks, but it's also adding a glow to the sky. Let's zoom in here and just see how the rocks are catching light, but not the shadows. That's good. But the highlights in the sky, I don't want this halo. Or if I click on the glowing dodge button here, we can visualize this. So this will show us that, yeah, we hit the highlights we wanted, but then things spilled over into the sky. And that's what we need to avoid. So we need a different approach for this. Let's go start over. I'm going to go and clear things out here, delete our layers. And let's try again using the new options in Lomenzia 11.7 by going to the fly up menu at top right. Go to this orange preview options. And in here are these new options. It also includes the paint and dodge options that used to be in the flyout menu are now in here as well. So what I need to do at this point is have some kind of selection tool to isolate the foreground. And I find the object selection tool works really well. So by picking this, I'm going to tell Lomenzia that while I'm using the orange preview layers to load this as my active selection tool. And then in addition, I frequently work on my levels layer. So I'm going to choose the auto optimize, which will just do it for me. And we'll come back and discuss the rest of these in a moment. Let's just say done for now and try things over. So I'm going to go click on dodge again, transparent with an overlay blend mode, and then go reach for a light preview. And we're back to the same place, but this time notice that the tool has changed to the object selection tool. I didn't do that. Lomenzi did that for me. And the moment I get rid of this preview, if I just discard it, you see that it goes back to my last tool, which happened to be the brush. So it's just while I have the orange preview active, it's loading my preferred selection tool. So I'm going to go click on L. I've got the preview active. And now what I can do is I can go and just click and kind of lasso roughly the area that I want to work on. And I find this is the best way to use the object select tool. It provides more accurate results. Even with that sloppy selection, you see the ants tighten up to the edges there to give me a perfect isolation of the foreground versus the sky. And the way to interpret this is Lomenzi is gonna take the luminosity only within the areas of the marching ants. So this entire sky area is going to be excluded from the final result, even though it's bright and would be selected in a general lights one mask, the ants are going to exclude it. So that's helped refine things where I need them. You also notice this kind of pink glow that's part of the object selection tool. You can just click on an area to select it, but I find using the lasso mode of this tool actually gives the best results most of the time. So now I want to help further isolate my highlights from my shadows. So I'm going to go drag the slider down to something like lights two. That's maybe a little too much, maybe lights one and a half. And that gives me a good separation between the highlights and the shadows. Now, one thing I normally do is open up the levels layer and I would bring in the whites to kind of tighten things up. But you notice that's already been done for me. Normally, this would just be an unadjusted levels layer and I can manually tweak it as I want. But Lamenzi has done this for me because we had set that option that says to auto optimize the levels layer. So if I go pick a more restrictive lights for, then it's very dark, but I can still have a strong selection because this auto optimize is automatically bringing in this levels layer. Without it, I'd have this very dark result and now I just have a stronger selection. So just a very handy way to tighten things up without having to go in there and manually tweak it. But of course you can still revise this or just not use it if you don't want to, but I find it very handy. And let's just go back to our lights one and a half. And I think this should be the right results. So we got a nice highlight to the rocks, but only in the foreground, not in the sky. So now I'm going to click on cell. Lomenzi is going to see my selection and ask, how should it be combined? 
and we want to take it and maybe just feather it by about one pixel because this is a hard selection and I'll just soften that edge a little bit. We'll say OK. And I'm back to using my brush with the warmer light foreground color. I can start brushing in these areas. And as I do so, I don't have to worry about the sky because that selection has protected. I can go and brush all day long in the sky area and nothing bad is going to happen. It's protected. I'm only painting in the foreground rocks. So that's a really nice way of letting me work on the target area and cast light on my subject without throwing it spilling over to the sky, which is a totally separate thing and just really shouldn't be getting additional light there. It doesn't make any sense. I want the light to be cast onto the rocks, but the sky should not be getting brighter on that side of the sky. We'll take care of the, the sunny side in a moment. So I'm just going through kind of taking the existing light in the image and enhancing it through my custom luminosity selection here on my dodge burn layer. And at this point, let's see how we've done from before to after. And maybe give a little touch more here. And then notice there's nothing blowing over into the sky. There's no halo. If I click to visualize my dodge layer, Everything is fully contained where I want it to be. There is nothing painted into the sky. It's just in the rocky area. So it looks great. And I think that's a nice result. And I'm going to stick with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command D to deselect. And now I want to add that light to the sky. For that, I'm going to go create a new dodge burn layer. Again, transparent in overlay blend mode. This time, though, instead of a brush, I'm going to hit G for the gradient tool, and it's set to the foreground to transparent gradient in a radial mode. So it's going to take my warm color and just make a gradient by dragging out like this. It creates a little ball of light, and then I can Command T to reshape it a bit. And I think I may have overdone that. Let me try one more time here. So let's go and click and drag out like so, and then reshape that, and maybe tighten it up a little bit kind of stretch it out a bit, just casting a little bit of light, something like this in the scene, I think is pretty good, but it's a bit more light than I need. So I'm gonna bring the opacity down halfway to something like 60%. And then I wanna create a little more haze. So I'm gonna create another dodge burn layer, but this time in the soft light blend mode for a different result. And again, just using my gradient tool and just kind of drag it out across the scene like so transform it a bit and just kind of stretch it out, casting a nice warm light in the scene. But in this case, it's gotten too much into the shadows. I want to target just the highlights. And an easy way to do that is with the blend if, and I can create a lights blend if in Lumenzia by holding shift and clicking L. So we get this blend if lights one. And if I just look from before where it's glowing everywhere in the shadows to after where it's isolated the highlights, just give me a little better result. So this layer is now adding this contribution to add that nice glow without getting too much into the shadow areas. And then to really complete the effect, let's grab a lasso. I'm just hitting L for the lasso, kind of drag across my scene like so, and then go click for a vignette. And so now we can see from the original where light was pretty even in the sky and the rocks, and there wasn't a lot of directionality to it, to after a much more clear direction to this scene. You see how nicely the image kind of comes together, really looks very well lit. Now to take things a bit further, let's explore some of these other options we have in the new tools here. So if we go back up to the top right flat menu to orange preview options, notice that we have all these different tools. So we can use a quick select, lasso, polygonal lasso, pen tool, curvature pen tool, or just turn it off. So if I go pick something like quick selection, that would become my tool when I'm doing a preview. So I'll hit done here. Maybe I go create a, a dark preview this time. And when I do this, now the quick select tool is active for me and I can click and drag and you see that it's creating those marching ants with the quick select to create whatever result I want. Uh, I'm gonna just discard all this, but kind of gives you a sense that whatever tool you want is active when you need it. And then when you're done, it's gone away. It's no longer on the quick select. It's on the last tool I had, which happened to be the lasso tool. Let's go back up in there. Next, we've already looked at the auto optimized level. I think that's a great tool. I would generally turn that on. We have this paint on orange previews and dodge burn the orange previews. These were previously part of the flyout menu itself. They've moved in here. So they do the same thing, but they're a bit different in that when they're active, 
the brush becomes active for you with black and white paint automatically. So let's try this. Let's try the paint and the dodge. We'll go ahead and say done. Let's create another preview. Let's go do another lights preview. Let's maybe do like a lights two. And in this mode now, if I want to further refine things, maybe let's go a little bit in the middle here. So in this case, maybe I want to knock out some of these mountain areas here. Well, at this point, the quick select tool is active because that's my default tool. But if I click on the dodge burn layer, the brushes become active for me and I've got black and white paint ready to go. And with my black paint, I can just simply brush to refine my existing result. And it's going to darken that down without affecting the highlights too much. So you can see how that just nicely knocks those areas out if I need to do that. And if I want to lighten up the sky, I could hit X to switch over to white paint and just kind of paint on the sky areas and kind of lighten them up. So it gives me a nice way to help take the gray pixels and nudge them towards black or towards white. Now I can do the same thing on the paint layer, but instead of nudging things, it just outright would add to or remove. So I could go switch to black paint. And if I just need to remove something, I just brush right over it, maybe with a little higher flow. We just knock out anything we don't want. So it doesn't make a lot of sense in this particular preview, but it can be a really handy way of refining other types of previews. In addition to the paint and dodge, the black and white layer here for the color conversion, when I select this, it has now automatically made the targeted adjustment tool for the black and white layer active. So notice none of my tools are showing as selected, but I have this little picker. So if I click and drag, I can refine by color. So if I want more of the rocks and click and drag right, I get more of that yellow rock. And if I click and drag here, I get a little bit less of that sky color. And what's happening is, it's working with the underlying color in the image. So we've got a warm color here, and got a reddish color and a blue color. Not a lot of separation here, but just enough that we can kind of nudge things around. If we were to open up the black and white layer, we see that what's happened is it basically went in this targeted mode and then whatever slider corresponds to that area is the one that's getting adjusted. It's just that when I select the black and white, it's now automatically picking this tool for me so that I don't have to go and open up the properties panel and do all this kind of stuff. It just happens for me. Let's go delete this and just one more time, take a look at the options here. So we have our default tool that will be active whenever we're not on a paint or dodge layer or in a black and white layer. And so that's a great way of refining by subject. We've got the levels layer that tightens things up. We've got the paint and dodge if you want to manually paint and refine your preview before you load it. And this last one is the default active layer. So if I say none, it'll just go back to whatever layer was active, but I can choose what layer starts and the starting layer is going to determine which tool is active. So if I go choose the dodge layer, then that would become the active layer with a brush and I can immediately start dodging and burning my preview. Probably what you might want to use is the black and white layer if you don't usually use the selection. So none would be great if you want the selection tool, black and white's great for jumping right into using that tool. So let's try that. We'll say done. And now if I create a new preview, I'm immediately on the black and white layer and I can just start clicking and dragging on the image to refine that color as I need and help isolate things. And again, not really the right tool for this image, but in a lot of cases, color is a great way to customize your previews. Now click into this next video to learn more about custom previews in Lumencia.